Hello everyone, welcome to Lycans of India channel. This is episode 7 and in this episode I will be telling about the uses of Lycans. So when I say uses of Lycans, uses for whom? Uses for both here, one for nature or the ecosystem services of Lycans, another is uses for human beings. What are the uses of the Lycans? First I will tell you about the ecosystem services of the Lycans. These lichens act as a food for several of the small organisms like it may be snail or the several of the invertebrate small organisms eat these lichens and that's why lichens act as a food for this organism. Second thing is that not only providing the food they also lichens also provide shelter to these animals. So sometimes if the in a tree or so if the heavy thick uh, growth of lichen is there, sometimes it can give shelter to even uh, larger organisms like a snake also. So apart from that, some of the lichens which fix the nitrogen that is the cyanolichens what we say where the symbiont is a cyanobacteria, they fix the nitrogen and when such lichens falls on the ground, it increases the soil fertility. And these are the few the ecosystem services. Next, uh, another thing is that these uh, lichens are used for camouflage, camouflaging by the many of the uh, animals or the organisms. Sometimes these uh, organisms, uh, they mimic lichen also. So that is why they are uh, protected from their uh, prey. For example, in this picture, you can see here a moth, a peppered moth is sitting over Lichen, it is completely camouflaged. You can you cannot make out an insect is sitting over the lichen here. And in this picture, you can see catitid insect. It is looking like a lichen asnia, and it is moving over this uh, lichen asnia. You can clearly see how nicely it is camouflaged here. And in this picture, you can see another insect. It is called as Australian prickly insect. You can see it is it has taken the shape of lichen. See how nicely it is uh, moving over lichens and um, completely camouflaged with that. You can say camouflage, you can say mimicry here. Here you can see one of the caterpillar is uh, simply uh, merged with the color of the lichen here. You cannot make out and in this picture you can see one uh, grasshopper kind of insect is sitting over the leaf. Uh, that is uh, it has taken the uh, pattern of the folliculus lichens here and in this picture you can see uh, this frog is completely camouflaged uh, between the lichen here so you cannot make out as frog is sitting over uh, this lichen so like this many of these uh, uh, animals or the organisms in the nature they either mimic with the uh, mimic the lichens or they nicely camouflage with the uh, lichen so and these lichens are also used in the bird nesting. Birds such as uh, hummingbird, so do you use these lichens for making the nest? So you can see in this picture, see how beautifully this uh, hummingbird has a made nest of uh, these lichens. Like that, either these birds use lichens for completely building their nest or sometimes they use lichens as a cushioning material or some decorative material. In this picture you can see few fragments of lichens are there in this nest. It may be for decorative purpose they have used. And you can see here, if this is on the ground, the uh, bird has laid its egg on the in between the lichen. It is nicely camouflaged here. So like these birds use these uh, lichens either for building their nest or for camouflaging their eggs with the um, uh, to protect themselves from the uh, predators. So lichens are also used as the fodder. See uh, some lichens which are called as the um, reindeer moss, Cladonia family, uh, Cladoniaceae family. So they grow on the ground like a carpet. Here, here in this picture you can see this is a Cladia aggregata growing like a carpet on the ground and, the, and these animals, reindeer, they eat them. Especially during the winter when there is a huge snow cover on the ground, uh, these animals have a special sense for these uh, lichens. So they dig the, dig the snow and they eat it. 
and otherwise you can see here the other animal eating the asnia and other things which are hanging from the tree twigs so lichens are also uh, eaten as fodder by the animals and so another important role of uh, lichens in the ecosystem service is in this in the soil formation it is called as pedogenesis what happens here in any uh, exposed uh, rock surfaces lichens are the first organisms to colonize these lichens do not require any nutrition and of course this rock also do not have the nutrition but see since lichens depend on the atmosphere for their nutrition so these they are easily grow on the rock and while growing over the rock they break the rock into soil particles it it is done by two ways either by physical process or by chemical process in the physical process what they do these uh, uh, they uh, they closely grow over the rock and also sometimes their mycelia get entered into the small crevices which are invisible to us it their mycelia goes into these uh, crevices and when they when they become wet they swell when they dry up they shrink so this contraction expansion process creates pressure on the rock so that is how this rock it gets broken into small small soil particles this is the physical process in the chemical process what happens this lichen secretes several of the chemical substances these chemicals react with the rock minerals and hence they, they, that uh, when they react with the rock minerals that is called chelation and they then release the soil the soil uh, minerals uh, 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 rock minerals as a soil particles so this is the chemical process and once these uh, lichens are growing over the rock surfaces after uh, sometimes they make the place suitable for the growth of the other organisms to come and the which are the other organisms mosses usually the mosses or the bryophytes are the next organism to come and colonize on the rock surface and after sometimes this moss is replaced by the other plants like grass so like that on a exposed rock from lichen the plant communities are getting replaced one by one and ultimately we will be having a climax forest in that area and this is a very very slow process you cannot visualize probably you cannot feel the process in your lifetime but if you take a geological scale geological time scale this is one of the important process going on in the nature then this biodeterioration this process is also called as biodeterioration that uh, uh, breaking of the rock into soil particles this also called as biodeterioration it has a significance in the biodeterioration study of the monuments and the old buildings so because these lichens also grow on the monuments the statues uh, and all uh, even on the old uh, building surfaces they also they do the same process they deteriorate it and the archaeologist and all will try to conserve these monuments so they study what kind of lichens are growing over the rock and these monuments and uh, how they are ca ca causing the damage how we can remove them how, and that is how, how we can protect our monuments of the world building they do it this kind of study is called as biodeterioration so then now coming to the importance of the lichens to human being how they are useful to us directly so one thing is that some of the lichens are edible for example there is a lichen called as ambilicaria esculenta this is common in uh, japan specially in um, uh, eastern asia so iwa take it is called in uh, japanese so um, so this lichen is eaten by the japanese people like there are few species in india also they are eaten as uh, uh, salads and all they fry it and eat it so otherwise everyone may be eating lichens you may not be knowing lichens are eaten as spice lichens are the one of the important ingredient in the spice so these lichens can be used as a raw spice uh, in hindi we call as kada masala or we can ground it make it a powder and use it so um, some of the branded garam masala like sohana raj um, and then prakash these some of the masalas if you turn the packet and see they have written lichens as one of the ingredient so and otherwise uh, 
otherwise if you go to the market and ask uh, the lichens the alag alag uh, i mean uh, different places have the different names for the lichens for example you can if you go to maharashtra they are called as dagad pole you can buy the spice in the name of dagad pole maybe in uh, uttarakhand it is called as julagas or in the north it is called as chedila so in this name you can collect this uh, take this uh, or you can buy this spice from the market and the spice that you get from the market uh, as a raw spice they are actually mixture of several species we have done um, one study like that we collected the lichen spice from the market from the several places several markets and we saw it's actually mixture of several species up to 40 species sometimes so but there is a different gradings of the lichens and usually if the lichens which you get in the northern india they come from the uh, himalayas and if you collect uh, if you get this uh, spice from the southern india they mostly come from the western guards so as i told you there is a gradation of uh, spice the grade one spice will be having the pure one species of lichen maybe parmotrima nilgarensis or it may be your nestrum seratum purely one species of lichen will be there and grade two will be mixture of two maximum three parmotrima nilgarensis or your nestrum seratum then the grade three if there is more than three four species of lichens are there in the uh, spice so then it is the grade three spice so like that this grading is there and as I told you, the spice what we get from the market is actually a mixture of several species. And these lichen spice are mostly used in the uh, preparation of the non-veg, especially in the biryani and all, they use lichens. Uh, see, if you go to Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad, the dum biryani, the, in the dum biryani, they use this uh, lichen spice uh, most of the time. So it gives a entirely different kind of aroma to the uh, biryani or the non-veg preparations. And then uh, these lichens are also used in the perfume industry for the preparation of the perfume. Lichens as such they don't have good aroma, they don't have the good smell. But the uh, method of preparation they use this lichen for the good different entirely different kind of aroma. What they do they put the lichens in the boiler along with the water they boil it then they pass the steam into a the essential oil into the essential oil when the steam passes through the uh, essential oil or the aromatic oil the final product product what you get will be having an entirely different kind of smell for example in uh, Uttar Pradesh uh, there is a city uh, town called as uh, Kanoj so here so we hear the, this is famous for the ether industry or the perfume industry so what they use lots of lichens for the perfume so the the special smell of this uh, uh, perfume prepared by the lichens are called as mehendi mehendi smell so uh, it gives a uh, it gives an entirely different smell mehendi it is also called as otto it is gives a entirely different smell and it sells uh, at costlier price also. Then uh, the another use of the lichens is that they are uh, used in the dye preparation. So you know this uh, litmus paper uh, you people might have used uh, uh, in your uh, school days, colleges days, the acid base indicator, the litmus paper, once upon a time that is being uh, prepared from the lichens only. Rosella montagni is a species of lichens which are used for the preparation of the litmus of course nowadays we have different kinds of litmus paper we may not be using this uh, lichen dye but earlier this rosella montagni is was used for the preparation of the litmus paper and otherwise if you see the some of the tribal people for example in the gadwal himalayas there is a, a gadwal herdsman what they do they uh, there is a lichen called as bulia sub sub sororioides which is growing on the rock surface it's a crustose lichen this is a darker in color these gadol herdsmen they spit on the rock and then they will rub it with the uh, rock or something like that and they put that uh, uh, paste on their hand so it, it is called as the mehendi 
should gives red in red color so this is how the lichen uh, mehendi they put the uh, these gadwal herdsmen put and otherwise if you boil these lichens uh, with uh, a silk or the cotton so it gives different colors okay so the color of the lichen color of the uh, the uh, color of the dye that yields like it yields depends on the type of the species and also duration how much duration you will boil boil so this is called as boiling method and uh, sometimes there is uh, people also use ammonia so if you treat ammonia and the lichens it also gives a beautiful color for example uh, loberia pulmonaria yeah, of course we don't have pulmonaria species in india we have loberia uh, other species as sub pulmonaria when you boil this uh, or when when you boil this lichens uh, with the with the cotton or silk it gives beautiful uh, uh, yellow color and like that parmotrema species will give uh, the pretty violet color uh, when you boil them to the wool and uh, also your near prunastri gives golden yellow color uh, to the wool so like that different colors it gives and uh, you can uh, use this uh, natural lichens also for the dye purpose dyeing the textiles so what happened in the earlier in the village side so the uh, special in the um jo hilly areas so where lichens are abundantly available say they don't have ammonia so what they use they also use cow urine cow urine for the uh, dyeing purpose they along with the lichens textiles uh, and the cow urine they use it also acts as the ammonia only it it gives a beautiful color you can use either uh, natural thallus in our in uh, institute we have done an experiment where we use the natural thallus also of the different species for dyeing the uh, tusk silks and different kinds of silk and also we culture this uh, culture the fungal part mycobiont of these uh, lichens and also we tested them this mycobiont also give a beautiful colors to the uh, silk and cotton in the laboratory so then these lichens are also used in the aesthetics if you go to uh you know, village side tribal people said they put these lichens on their head on their face so these tribal people they use this lichen for decorating them that is that is that is called as aesthetics purpose so uh, they have sometimes the traditional uh, ceremonies and all that time they wear this lichen for uh, decorating themselves for beautifying themselves sometimes they you put the lichens on their neck sometimes they put the lichens on their face as a beard and all asni are specially used for this purpose and that is why sometimes asni are also called as old man's beard and uh, bryoria bryoria again a fruticose lichen it looks brown in color the people also wear them wear that on their neck or on the head and so there are some lichens which are uh, uh, specially cladonia they have a beautiful red apothecia so these lichens are good for putting in the garden so uh, on on the hedges that you can put on the gardens you can put so it gives a different uh, look to the uh, your garden and sometimes these lichens are decorated inside the glass vessels uh, to make a show items and even lichens are used in the um, used in the packets it is called potpourri or the room freshener the lichens are used also as a um room freshener and sometimes lichens are used for making different uh, artifacts like uh, cups and other things like you can see here in this picture and the another important role of lichens is the uh, is in the air pollution indication of course lichens also indicate several other things so lichens because they are sensitive to air pollution and also change in the microclimatic conditions they they are used as the bio indicator so how do they indicate air pollution say they indicate air pollution by bleaching changing their color peeling off from the uh, thallus and disappearance of the sensitive species loss of the diversity change in the community structure and also they accumulate lot of pollutants so this is how they indicate the pollution and why they are sensitive to air pollution i have already discussed this matter in the previous episode you can please uh, check into that 
and apart from what air pollution what are the other things they indicate they indicates the health of the forest if you collect lichens from an older forest and also a, a, from a um, younger forest you can clearly see the difference in the lichen communities type of the species you get in this forest are different that is how you can make out these are the old growth this is the the old grown forest or this is a young forest you can make out and whether there is any disturbances if there is an anthropogenic disturbances in a forest the sensitive species again will dis disappear and so the lichen community will be different in a um, disturbed forest you can make out if the forest is, have, has a history of the fire and all so you will get sometimes the calicial members in that forest you can make out this forest was once upon a time was um, affected with the fire you can make out health of the forest it indicates the ecological continuity it indicates whether it has the um, how the forest was growing it was uh, without, it was uh, attained a climax phase without any disturbance or not like that sometimes uh, if there are a mineral rich source is there uh, the where it is growing lichens indicate that also mineral source of the resources in a place also indicates especially if the copper resources there in more in the in any area so these lichens become bluish or violet in color so uh, like that uh, these also lichens also indicate about the forest health mineral resources uh, sometimes the vegetation type climate of an area and uh, it indicates so then also coming to uh, this the other things like lichens also indicates uh, um, a climate change so lichens uh, which are um, uh, as i told you they are sensitive to climate change also so in a colder area the lichen community will be different in a um, warmer place lichens community will be different because of the change in the climate the uh, um, the lichens from the colder area the which prefer the colder uh, uh, climatic condition they disappear and the the lichens which are go, prefer the warmer climate they increase in in their number uh, uh, that is how they also indicate the climate change lichens are also used in the lichenometry lichenometry is a study where the uh, size of the lichens are used for uh, measuring the age or estimating the age of a rock surface or the uh, period of uh, the of rock surface when it got exposed so because these lichens are very slow growing sometimes some of the lichens are they grow only few millimeters in a year for example rhizocarpon there is a lichen called rhizocarpon geographicum it is yellow in color it is available in the temperate area and alpine areas and all it grows uh, about one or two millimeter in a year so now you know the age of the lichen so the smaller the thallus size and the younger this age and the larger the thallus the bit more of the age so that is how you know the age of the lichen and using the uh, age of the lichen you are calculating the uh, the rock surface when it got exposed either from the uh, snow cover or from the earth surface so when it is exposed and using this parameter we are calculating the age or the rate of movement of the glacier and all so for example we have conducted a study where we have um, the measured the glacier retreat uh, in the in the gangotri pindari glacier uh, in the pindari glacier so what we have done here we uh, the measured the lichen thallus size of the this rhizopar geographica from the glacial snout to 1 kilometer and naturally the lichens which are growing near the glacial snout are smaller in size younger and the which one which are growing away from the glacial snout are larger in size so what we learned from this study is that the pindari glacier took about 550 to 600 years to go back retreat about 1 km so this is one of the one of the uses of the lichenometry like that sometimes you can use this lichenometry also to measure the 
uh, age of the age of the old monuments if there is a old monument its age is not known if it is not maintained but lichens are growing there you can use this there so lichenometric studies are sometimes uh, uh, said as better than the carbon dating because the the accuracy it gives the age it gives is the the lesser uh, compared to the uh, car carbon dating so this is lichenometry and the lichens are also used in the used as medicines they are used in the uh, traditional medicines like ayurveda yunani and all homeopathy and all even the tribal medicines lichens are used chinese in the chinese medicines lichens are one of the important uh, ingredients and there is something called as doctrine signature here in the doctrine signature it means that like affects the like if in nature any plant or plant part resembles our organ so then people think that this plant may or the plant part may help in curing the disease in that part for example we have a lichen lobaria pulmonaria so which if you turn it down its dorsal surface um, its lower surface looks like the lobes of the lungs so that is why people use this lichen for the lung diseases miraculously it works also and there is a lichen called xanthoria parietina it is yellow in color these lichens is used for the treatment of jaundice in the uh, traditional medicines like that there is a lichen called peltigera canina here the fruiting body of the uh, lichen looks like the canine the teeth of the dog that's why this lichen is used in the dog bite so miraculously it works also this is called as the doctrine signature apart from that so lichens are being used in the uh, indian uh, system of medicine since long time maybe around 6000 to uh, so 4000 bc it is reference is there in the rigveda atharveda in the name of shipal and even in the sanskrit it is there is uh, it is called as shailaya or shila push uh, in uh, sushruta samhita and all so in ayurveda it is called as uh, charila and uh, there are lot of lichens are used and apart from this traditional uses um, these lichens are also shows the several of the biological activities in the laboratory so um, they have shown the activities like antimicrobial activity antioxidants anti-inflammatory anti-pyretic anti-tyrosine analgesic anti-proliferative activity cardiovascular um, uh, protective even um, even uh, gastro uh, gastro protective there are the several even uh, hepatoprotective cytotoxins lots of activity biological activities these lichens have shown so um, in india we have about 150 species of the lichens which are medicinally important some of them are used in the traditional medicine some of them at least they have shown activities in the laboratory experiments and why these lichens are highly um, medicinally important because they produce more than 1000 secondary metabolites and these secondary metabolites are most of them uh, are unique to lichens only say 50 or 60 are common with the other plant groups and all they are found in the other plants also but most of them are unique to lichen you don't get them anywhere else and these most of the secondary metabolites have shown the biological activities so that is how these lichens are very much medicinally important also so in our laboratory we have carried out several studies where we have used the natural thallus for testing these biological activities sometimes also we have carried out uh, the microbiome culture of this lichen and this microbiome culture also have shown the good biological activities so this is about the uses of the lichens i hope this uh, video is helpful to you and if you like it please click the like button and uh, encourage our efforts share this video with your uh, friends and colleagues and uh, uh, try to popularize our site lichens of india thank you very much